Welcome to ZSL's Wild Science, the show which looks at how groundbreaking science is coming to the rescue of some of the most endangered animal species on the planet. My name is Jess and this week we'll be looking at how ZSL scientists are investigating the mystery of cetacean strandings. Cetaceans, which are whales, dolphins and porpoises, have regularly stranded around the UK for centuries. The underlying causes of these strange events are not always clear, and it's the job of the Cetacean Strandings Investigation Programme to coordinate the investigations of all cetaceans, marine turtles and basking sharks that strand around the UK coastline. Since it was set up in 1990, the CSIP have recorded data on over 12,000 stranded cetaceans, and nearly 3,500 post-mortems have taken place producing one of the world's largest research data sets on strandings and the causes of death in these enigmatic creatures. Today I'm meeting Rob DeVille, the project manager of the Cetacean Strandings Investigation Programme here at ZSL. So Rob, what happens when there is a cetacean stranding and the CSIP team are called into investigation? You get a phone call and the first thing you want to try and assess is what species is it, you know, where is it, can we access it safely and in what condition is it in? If it's in a good enough condition, are you fresh enough, we'll try and get it off the beach and then bring it back to one of our labs, for example here at ZSL, to carry out a post-mortem examination. What sort of things can you discover from a post-mortem examination? Well, essentially DEFRA have been funding the programme for 25 years now to try and establish causes of death, how these animals die, and from that we learn more about the threats they face in UK waters. And essentially we're interested in the man-made threats, predominantly. Things like bycatch, that's the accidental entrapment of fishing gear, ship strike, impacts of marine noise and quite significantly at our end we've done a lot of work on the impacts of marine pollution. All those things can be gleaned from a post-mortem examination but we're not just interested in how they've died. These species are really hard to study in the wild. There's been a fraction of time at the surface of the water. You can gain an awful lot of information and samples and data from study of dead animals to try and learn more about how they've lived as well. Earlier this year there was a mass stranding of sperm whales in the UK so how was the CSIP team involved in that? In this instance, we had lots of sperm whales, but over a long period of time in many locations. What that meant, though, in practice, was that we were constantly caught back and forth to a series of strandings events of sperm whales on the East Coast. And we think at the moment there are 30 sperm whales that are stranded around in five different countries over a one-month period, uh, all juvenile or subadult males, as I said. And all those necropsies of post-mortem showed causes of death that would be consistent with live stranding. And that's not surprising, that's what we've seen in lots of sperm whales we've seen historically in the UK before. What isn't clear is why we had such large numbers entering the North Sea, and this is a very unusual event. Going back to the historical data, we've had nothing in this order of magnitude for several hundred years. So the question still is, why do these sperm whales enter the North Sea in such large numbers? And that's something we're still looking into. What are the advantages of having done all of these investigations for 25 years? What that gives us is a huge time series. We look at a variety of different species across time, see how their distribution changes over time. We begin to see potential climate change and impacts with warm water species moving further north, cold water species moving further away. So we can see that kind of change in distribution over time. The other thing we get is a huge amount of data and samples. So we have over 100,000 samples now we've collected over 25 years. All that material, all that data feeds into lots of collaborational research. We now know an awful lot more about the threats and uh, causing what's how they face in the UK that we didn't know about 25 years ago. The work that the CSIP have done in the past 25 years provides invaluable insights to help detect future outbreaks of disease, unusual mortality events or responses to environmental challenges such as climate change, which may just protect the future of these incredible creatures. Click subscribe to keep up to date with our Wild Science episodes and why not find out more about our work tracking the world's smallest sloth in the video here.